All right, we have our motor reinstalled. Now it's time to adjust the correct setting or projection of the bit. When we talk about projection, we mean the distance from the back fence to the tip of the router bit. That is a pretty crucial setting as the bit is moved further out. If it cuts deeper into the wood, it will increase the draw. The keys will pull more, but that also puts some side pressure on the joint and in thin material, it could cause splitting. So on thin material, we want to set it to the factory setting or possibly even back off a little bit. On heavier, stronger material or molding, we can bring the bit in a little bit more towards us so we get more draw and a tighter joint. There's two ways to set this up. One is with our square stop that is shipped with the machine. To use it as a setup gauge, you need to take it out of the fence rail that's recessed in the table. If you leave it in the fence rail, uh, it is set up so that these two legs do not touch the back fence so it doesn't rub along but that would not give you a correct setting. So you slide it out, take the handle out and a little square nut and when you turn it over you'll see that the different machine steps are marked W1, W2, W3, W4 and here's the smallest one, the W0. Since we changed to W1 router bit, we will use the W1 step, place it against the bit. The bits are made out of solid tungsten carbide and the square stop is aluminum. The carbide is a lot harder, it will not harm the bit. Just bring it tight, push it against the back fence and loosen this lever. That lever holds the motor in place. Now here's an important thing, when you loosen that lever, because of the weight, the motor will tip down in the back. So you need to break it loose and then tighten it again with your finger, just so that it's tight enough to bring the motor back up, but you can still move it back in and out with the adjustment knob. If you loosen that lever and leave it very loose, your router bit is not gonna be parallel to the table, but it actually is gonna sit like this and that will not give you an accurate setting. So bring it back in with one finger and then turning that knob to the right as you're facing the machine will move the motor towards you and we'll see that here. I'm turning this and you can now see how that jig or that square stop rocks <clears throat> because the bit touches on the step but the two legs left and right can't reach the back fence anymore. And then if I turn to the left, I'm backing off the motor and now you get to the point where the back legs touch, but you can spin the bit by hand and you can feel that the bit does not touch the step. We need to get to a setting where the bit just touches that step. So we're turning right again and then just check it by turning it by hand. A little bit more and you will get to a point where you feel a little scratching or you can even see like here how that setup gauge moves a little bit and that's the setting that we want to be at. We'll now tighten that lever all the way so our motor is tight and that is our setting. The next step would be to make a test cut, put a key in the joint, see how it pulls and we can then still fine adjust in and out if we need to. Another way to adjust a bit and a bit easier way is with this digital setup gauge that is available as an accessory. When you use it, make sure the bottom contact piece is tight. If this is loose, it will give you an inaccurate setting, so tighten that up. Place the jig flat on the table, slide the center stem against the back fence and press the zero button to reset it to zero. You can switch from millimeters to inches, either one will work fine. In the manual for the machine, as well as the instructions that come with the setup uh, gauge, the numbers for W0 to W4 bits are listed in millimeters and inches. We'll place it against the router bit, slide it all the way in, and now we can take a reading. And our factory or average setting for W1 is 3.5, we're at 3.56, so that's very small amount over, we're basically right there. 
The nice thing about this setup, the digital setup jig, is that if you want to bring it in a little bit more to get a little bit more draw, you can loosen this up. And as I'm turning the knob to the right, you actually see the number increase on the display and you can adjust the bit setting very precisely. If you need to back the bit off a little bit, you turn to the left. Keep in mind that as the bit moves back, it obviously cannot pull that center measuring stem with it. So once you pull it back a little bit, make sure you push the center stem back onto the bit so you get an accurate reading. I'm at 3.4 right now, so I'm going to turn right again a little bit, bring that in to 3.5, tighten it up, and that's how I set my router bit. The next step before we put in our chip breaker is we're going to lower the motor back down with the same uh, stem that we moved it up before, just back that back down, and then we'll make a test cut without a chip breaker. Inserting a key into a joint is the best way to check how tight the joint is, if it pulls accurately, and when we're happy with the results, then we install a new chip ring. Okay, so here you can see when I hold the gauge against the back fence and I turn my fine adjustment knob to the right, how I can slowly increase my setting. And also as I back off and turn to the left and then slide the center stem in. I'll get back down below my 3.5. So now turning to the right I can slowly get up to the setting I want to be. Tighten my locking lever and that's how I set my router bit. 